Welcome to another edition of Inside Press Box presented by Maryland Mutual Mortgage. I'm your host, Stan the Fan Charles, and we've got a great show for you this week. And my guest to the right, who I'll show in just a minute, is the reason, one of the reasons. Andrew Primrose, Director of Operations for the Ed Block Courage Award Foundation, will be joining me to discuss the 33rd Annual Ed Block Courage Award Ceremony, and we'll be checking in with the Washington Capitals alumni who took the ice last week in Patterson Park. But first, the March 4th deadline for a new collective bargaining agreement is rapidly approaching and joining me now to talk about the possibility of a lockout is former Ravens owner and president, David Modell. I guess owner is a little steep, right? Yeah, that's right? a little steep. Art, I, Art I, owned it. Art, yeah, Mr. Mr. Modell. Mr. Modell. To me. I got gotcha. <laughs> Art to you. <laughs> how, first of all, how is Art and uh, your mom, Pat? Very well. Spent They're time good? with them today, and uh, they were uh, f uh, full of you-know-what and vinegar, so it was great. Were they excited that you were coming on with me again? They were thrilled beyond words. That's why they didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're laughing, but we the uh, violin is playing. Oh. Uh, Rome burns while we fiddle away. It is. March the 4th, at midnight March the 3rd, right. uh, this collective bargaining agreement ends. Right. Where do you see the situation right now, David? Well, uh, uh, both sides have been in mediation in Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, perhaps the good news is that that mediation was extended uh, to Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Uh, which would be an eighth day. They had committed to seven, and so they've added an eighth day. So maybe we should be taking, you know, just the little baby steps and viewing that as positive. Um, so ho hopefully they're making enough progress that they can forestall uh, any type of draconian labor action, which is, of course, rumored to be occurring shortly thereafter. I'm not sure you've ever sat in on those exact type of meetings, but uh, your dad probably did at one point in his career or another. He did. But, but these guys are sitting together now for six, seven hours a day for seven days a week. Yes. Are they just sort of like, hey, what's going on? You know, what are they talking about during that six, seven hours a day? Well, none of us know. The uh, mediator has done a great job of, uh, of keeping uh, everyone quiet about what's going on. And that and is a smart move, you'd agree. I think it is. Yeah. That, that way you're not polarizing in, in the media. Um, and um, so obviously if you're, if you're in that environment, a mediator is attempting to get everyone to speak nicely to each other and, and, and to talk about things constructively. And in fact, the mediator did come out with first comments saying that there was some progress, but there are still substantial issues to be discussed. So, you know, all of us left out here reading the tea leaves, you know, look at the tea leaves and, and we kind of wonder, okay, does that eighth day mean that there's enough progress that, oh Lord, it won't happen, there won't be a lockout, or what? What does it mean? Let me ask you this about the, the current situation. Um, the, as we speak tonight, we're taping, the, uh, the uh, GMs, are kind of briefing everyone out in Indianapolis, or the GMs are being briefed. GMs, head coaches, and another significant uh, senior member of the staff. So okay. Three, so three folks from each team. Are, are being briefed on, on what exactly and by whom? Is it Roger Goodell? Is it Jeff Pash? Well, once again, we're, we're not quite sure uh, exactly what's going on. The, the league has, has said that this is not uh, out of the ordinary, that, that we've had these meetings before. But obviously, you've not had this meeting with the sort of Damocles hanging over your head at midnight on the 3rd. So one assumes they could be getting an update as to what's been going on in those mediation sessions. Or uh, they could be briefed on just what exactly can happen in the event of a lockout, what you can and cannot do, can't talk to players, can't work with them, etc. Uh, they could be briefed on... Um, the last best offer, which is how we got the original plan B before the settlement that led to the current CBA in 93. Um, and, that, and that would be okay if there was some, if, there, if, if, they were, if they were going to impose the last best offer, at least that means there's a hope we're playing football. That's all I'm concerned about. That's all Ravens fans are concerned about. Don't take our football away. Y'all should be able to sort this out. $9 billion is a lot of loot. You should be able to sort it out. I think there was I, a. I the, hope they could there was clearly a, a solid relationship that got built between Paul Tagliabue and the late Gene Upshaw, yes. who was the NFLPA's leader for many, many years. He's Absolutely. passed away. Tagliabue's out of the picture. Yes. Tell me about that one aspect of this. How important is it 
that neither Goodell and Damar Smith don't have a real relationship at this point. Is that important? Or well, are the issues, the issues. Well, the issues are the issues, I guess. Uh, you know, I think that you can develop relationships quickly. Um, you know, I think what what the, the what Tag and Gene had going for them is they recognized uh, that partnership and labor peace was highly beneficial to everyone's best interest. Yes. And when you think about it, I was I was reading and preparing for taping with you and. You know, I was kind of scratching my head. That agreement was 1993, so there has been no labor strife, no no real labor For strife. For 17 years in the NFL. That's yeah. a long time. I would bet the other leagues would just die to have had that that length of time. Certainly baseball would. Sure. Um, so, you know, I think they understood that. But what's clear is that the last CBA extension was so onerous to the owners. Now, they did see it. They did sign it. Shame on them for doing it, not doing their homework properly. Right. Um, um, so, you know, ho hopefully, hopefully, you know, hopefully, we, we keep our fingers crossed. Everyone, they're able to, to develop that relationship. They're able to see that, you know, the guy who's earning $50,000 to whom a relationship with the Ravens is, it's not like your relationship with a coffee cup or Crest toothpaste or even a TV channel that you really like a lot. Like have, WMAR. Exactly, you have a personal relationship. Yeah. So now, when, you're, when the other significant party in the relationship stops talking to you, stops giving you love, then what starts to happen? This is just natural human psychology. You start getting angry, building resentments. That's what happened to baseball. Yep. And, and still hurts them to this day. They will, ex they, I believe they'll say, fans certainly tell me that. We got less than a minute. One oh, quick question. 1993, <laughs> yes, sir. our health insurance, the average guy on the street was a lot less than it is today. How much is the cost of medical care playing into this and the, and the concerns of future litigation for the league and taking care of players in their post-playing days? I'd like to think that player benefits uh, are, are, are not prophylactic, in other words, you know, put in place to prevent lawsuits. I'd like to think that they're put in place because it's the morally correct thing to do because, you know, face it, these guys are playing a big boy game. It's very tough. They are going to have issues later on in life, and, and so everyone should be aware of that. David Modell, always a pleasure. Great to be here, brother. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go to break, let's take a look at our photo of the week brought to you by Yingling Lager, a true American classic, just like David Modell. Taste the quality that 180 years of family owned and operated tradition brews into every single bottle. Right now. Sabina Moran was at the blast game against the Omaha Vipers last weekend and captured this picture of Robbie Aristodemo and Mike Lookingland. The blast won that game 14 to 10, as well as their Sunday game against the Milwaukee Wave 20 to 9 to secure a playoff berth Aristodemo scored four goals for nine points during the two games earning him MISL player of the week honors to read more about last weekend's blast games visit pressboxonline.com the O's play their first spring training game on Monday and to keep up to date on all the latest Orioles news visit csnbaltimore.com reporter Brent Harris has all the coverage in his daily dugout blog, keep up with the Orioles throughout spring training at csnbaltimore.com.